Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Mataraja here, back with a new video lesson for y'all. Now, I know some of you are wondering, this is supposed to be a walking bass line lesson. What, what am I doing? Playing chords and melody, and then whatever the hell else that I was doing. Fair question. But before I actually get to the lesson, I do want to remind you all that you can join my channel. Um, I've already got a bunch of people who've joined. It's pretty fun. I'm sharing quite a number of things that... I've been shedding since I was 12, um, you know, going down to the very, very um, basic ideas that I used to practice and I still use till date. And it's something that is extremely beneficial regardless of how many years you've been playing. All right. I always establish this with anybody. Your fundamentals will never go old because everything has a fundamental grounding, rooting and foundation, which is exactly what I wanted to touch base on with today's lesson the foundations required for walking bass lines okay <clears throat> for the purposes of this particular video i want to use fly me to the moon as the song okay because it's fairly diatonic there are a few chords here and there which are not in the key center which is cool because it allows us to think about what causes the deviation and how to use it okay so first things first okay Obviously, this is provided you've been practicing your scales and chord tones for a while, at least 6 to 12 months, okay? So one of the main building blocks for walking bass lines is your chord tones, okay? Your one, three, five, sevens. And instead of trying to sit and play all your chord tones in one particular key, take a tune, take a standard and play it in context. Context is great because it gives you purpose as to why you're playing certain things. Okay, so one thing you hear a lot in jazz standards. Is a motion of fourth. So A minor seven, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. Okay, so those are fourths going up, right? But it's not literal. It doesn't have to always do that. It could do. Okay. So, chord tones. So, A minor 7. D minor 7. G7. Seven, C major 7. Okay. That is with no voice leading. So, you learn to play without voice leading. Just take these first four bars. Play the arpeggios for what they are. Okay. Once you're comfortable and confident. Okay then you try to voice lead those chord tones okay instead of doing b g f d i went to the d up here just because i don't like to go below the e when i walk that's just how my mind works i usually avoid because it's something i'm not used to hearing in a straight ahead context Okay, so chord tones, very simple. Just take the first four bars of the tune, okay? And then take the next four bars, do the same thing, just the chord tones, then you voice lead. And obviously voice leading variations can change a lot. Depends on whether you want to keep going up or you want to come back down, or do you want to go up all the way, come back down all the way? There are so many ways you can actually practice this, okay? The second thing, is what you call the chromatic approach okay 
Now, I believe I did talk about this in a previous lesson, but the chromatic approach simply is you having a target note and looking at the chromatic notes above and below it. Okay, Typically, chromaticism starts with two, sorry, one semitone below or above the target note, and it goes up to two. Because if you go a third, that is technically not too chromatic anymore because that's a chord tone. For example, if I'm going from A minor 7 to D minor 7, okay, I do A, C, E, E flat, D. That's my chromatic approach into the D. And then I'm going to keep the same thing. So this is root third fifth or flat three fifth flat five into the next root okay the reason we're able to do this is just because the chords are moving in fourths if they're moving in a different direction we'll have to choose the chord tones accordingly and make the adjustments okay so that is root flat three five flat five that's flat five is a chromatic note so we're doing chromatic note two notes from above into the target note if i want to do above sorry below which would be c c sharp d i can't really use a chord tone system here i have to play something fairly based on scales so a b c c sharp d e f f sharp g all of them are good so five So, one thing I really, really want to emphasize is how these are just building blocks. This is not what makes up good walking bass lines, okay? It's not like every catch you hear is like, oh yeah, cool, one, two, three, four. It's not like that, which is actually what I want to eventually get to, okay? So... Building block number two is your chromatic approach above and below target tone. Okay, so much like what we did with the first block, where we play them for what they are and then we voice lead, we try to do the same thing with the chromatic stuff. You start from the root, chromatically reach the next root, keep doing this, and then you start from the third and do the same thing. Okay, now when you start doing it from the third, it might start to sound like you're playing different changes altogether which is cool because this is something that really helps us break away from the generic sounds of walking bass lines, okay? So we've done chord tones, we've done chromatic approach. The third thing I want to talk about is exactly what I was trying to do in the beginning of the video. It's the melody of the song. If I take the actual melody of Fly Me to the Moon, just listen to what happens, okay? actually walking with the melody and embellishing it okay now this is not going to be possible on all standards you can't do this over Donna Lee that's not going to be walking anymore that's running already so there's a good reason why I pick the supposed cheesy standards because they have very straightforward usually quarter note plus eighth note kind of melodies which you can get under your fingers in a walking mechanism and then embellish it to create different textures and ideas okay so there is a pdf you can download which is right in the description below okay i take the first four bars of fly me to the moon break it down into the blocks and then there is one full chorus of the entire song with the melody being the main walking bass line as a guide okay so these three building blocks will really establish 
a solid foundation and then obviously you try to take these systems and implement them on other tunes slowly but surely but i would definitely say don't jump too far ahead okay so i'm going to leave you all with five standards that i believe will help you build good vocabulary okay so fly me to the moon all of me yes all of me and then you can do afternoon in paris you can do all the things you are and obviously autumn leaves okay so these five songs for me really helped particularly autumn leaves and afternoon in paris uh because there are rather straightforward elements to it that can become so mundane when you start to play it a lot you know imagine you're playing it on a gig and you've got a bunch of horn players or the singer wants to sing the head twice and you know you start to really lose sight of how to get creative okay so these three building blocks aside i want to give you an additional thing to consider this is something we almost completely neglect and stop working on okay that is your two feel what is the two feel it's where you play half notes instead of quarter notes fly me to the moon let me play among the stars Typically we do 1515151515151515 right but you can change that too you can do 1 5 chromatic down 5 chromatic down 5 chromatic down ba 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 or 1 da 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 5 chromatic from the bottom up into the chord tone So that is super simple. Literally two notes a bar, okay? Don't forget that. I'm putting that towards the end of this because I feel like if I started off with that a bunch of would have stopped watching the video. <laughs> okay? Because I know I would have. Anyway, that's all for this lesson guys. I hope you dig this and like I said again, I go into bigger detail and more depth on the membership platform. Um no, I'm not trying to push all of you to do this to join but it's something you should possibly consider down the road because there are long term benefits there um yeah so i'll see you guys in the shed until the next one peace